Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's January 15th. If you could retire today, Steph, mm -hmm. do you know where you would go? Would you stay here in San Antonio? Mm -hmm. Would you wind up in Florida or out east or up north somewhere? Do you know? I think I think I would probably stay here. Yeah? Yeah. Well, or, we have a lot to offer here. I mean, they always talked about for years about how New Braunfels, yes. that whole corridor between San Antonio and Austin has become a kind of a retiree haven. I can see that. And mm -hmm. Texas in general, according to this article. Yeah, we've got a story we want to tell you about. This is a, a national moving network and resource hire a helper analyzed a current population survey from the Census Bureau and found the states and cities attracting the most retirees throughout the pandemic, as well as which states they left from. Mm -hmm. So nearly 400,000 Americans moved to a different area for retirement. This is according to the migration and mobility data from the Census Survey. So statewide, Virginia welcomed the highest number of new retirees last year. Second most popular was Florida. So Virginia ahead of Florida. How about yeah, that? In this article, yes. Yeah, followed by Wyoming, Pennsylvania, and Idaho. Those are the top retiree destinations, according to this survey. That's right. And Texas did make the list somewhere there. It's Texas, Hawaii, Oregon, Vermont, and Rhode Island rounded out the top 10 states where Americans moved for retirement. Consequently, the states that lost the highest number of retirees uh, Utah was on the list of where people were going, but also leaving. Yeah, at 17.3% uh, of its residents moved away from Utah for retirement. And then next was Maryland, which lost 12.3 of its retirees, followed by California at 11.1%. And guess what? Texas is on the list here uh, with 9.9% .9 moving and, away as well. And then New Jersey. And then five other states lost more than 3% of their retirees through the pandemic. Washington State, Virginia, Illinois, Iowa, and Georgia. But it appears, though, Florida remains a top draw for a lot of retirees. <laughs> Texas on the list, but Virginia doing very, very well. Oh, yeah, at number one now. I mean, my first guess when I saw the headline, I was like, oh, yeah, Florida for sure. But yeah, Virginia's on its way up there. I, too. I spent part of my growing up years there, and I would go back in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I have to revisit. We'll see. <laughs> Let's look at today's 9 at 9. President-elect Joe Biden now outlining his plan to fight the coronavirus. The nearly $2 trillion proposal calls for new $1,400 stimulus payments to most Americans and $160 billion to build a national vaccine program and boost testing. Meanwhile, local health officials report 1,829 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. 19 more people have died from the virus. The seven-day moving average now up to 1,782 cases a day. President-elect Joe Biden is asking Lisa Monaco, his deputy attorney general nominee, to serve as his inauguration team's Homeland Security Advisor. This comes as federal authorities warn that domestic extremists could carry out attacks on Biden's inauguration. Very first confirmation hearing for a crucial position in the Biden administration has been postponed in the Senate. The Senate Select Committee on Intelligence postponed today's scheduled confirmation hearing for Avril Haynes. Postponement is said to be because one senator wants to hold the hearings in person instead of remotely. The IRS opened its free file for the 2021 tax season. The government agency works with private companies to help Americans prepare and file their taxes. The service is available to anyone who makes adjusted gross income of $72,000 or less. Tax day is April 15th. Disneyland in California ending its annual pass program. The amusement park says the decision comes amid the continued uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic. Disneyland currently being used as a COVID-19 vaccination site. People with passes will be given refunds. NASA says its Orion spacecraft is ready for its mission to the moon. Orion is slated to launch for three different missions this year. The Orion capsule will fly out and orbit the moon before returning to Earth. If all goes as planned, the spacecraft will land and the first woman will walk on the moon. Samsung is releasing its new Galaxy S21 smartphone. The three new devices range from $800 to $1,200. All of them go on sale in two weeks. And Hershey's is expanding its thin candy lineup to include skinny Kit Kats. The Kit Kat thins feature two crispy wafers with a chocolate coating. They're hitting stores in February. And that's today's 9 at 9. I like the sound of that. Skinny Kit skinny. Kats. We yeah. can we can eat a few, a few more and, yeah, that's and not right. feel guilty, right? Right. Less guilty. I'll, I'll take a bag of those, please.
<laughs> Sounds good. Let's go outside right now with live cab. See how things are looking over there with Justin in the weather lab. 48 degrees. Not a bad looking weekend so far. Uh, not at all. In fact, Saturday looks amazing. We're going to be in the mid 60s. Sunny skies, less wind. There is going to be a little bit of wind today, but tomorrow less wind. Sunday looks good too. All in all, a great weekend on the way outside right now. 43 degrees north northwesterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Dew point is way down there at 16. So the air is extremely dry. And we'll get the temperatures up to about 61 this afternoon with uh, clear skies across all of South Texas. Let's talk about uh, pollen count real quick. Winds were up yesterday, so it's not a big surprise here. Mount Cedar has jumped up even higher. It doubled from yesterday's number, 8,790. And then surprisingly, mold jumped up, even though the air was dry, 1,600. It's in the high category. It's not a great day for allergy sufferers. Temperatures right now, 43 Bernie Stage, 45 Boulevardy, 50 in New Braunfels, 47 down there at Stinson. And the forecast calls for a high around 61, breezy northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll talk about that weekend and some good rain chances next week. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, there's a look at I-10 and Crossroads and I-10 at Callahan looking good this morning. Top stories we're following today. Wellmud has announced 9,000 COVID vaccination slots will be available starting this weekend. Those who can get one are healthcare workers, anyone 65 and older, and adults 18 and older with chronic health conditions. The clinics administering the vaccines are the Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Activity Center at 517 Southwest Military Drive and the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior One Stop Center at 8335 Culebra Road. Hotline number will open open tomorrow. Stay open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily until those appointment slots are all filled. And we have the number on your screen right now. A lot of folks are going to be very interested in this information. So here's the number. It is 1-833-968-1745. Again, 833-968-1745. But it will not be available until tomorrow morning starting at 8 o'clock. Four men escaped serious injury after their car rolled over on I-35 overnight. Now, police tell us it happened just before midnight near Starlight Terrace on the northeast side. Police said the car was heading north, weaving between 18 wheelers when it clipped one and rolled into another. Officers tell us speed was likely a factor in this crash. No one was hurt and no charges are expected to be filed. In your other morning headlines, another deadly earthquake and a sinkhole that got filled but then opened back up again. And bears enjoying some <laughs> tourist attractions. Our David Sears is here to explain all of this. Okay, enjoying the attraction? Sure, there's no humans around. Right, front of the line. <laughs> so they just move right in and then walk around and enjoy the attraction. Hey, look, look here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Yogi. I can't wait to see this. We'll get that in just a second. First, early this morning, Indonesia hit by a powerful earthquake. It registered 6.2 on the Richter scale. Rescue workers searching for survivors. At least 42 people were killed. But the number keeps climbing. Hundreds more have been injured. Several buildings were destroyed, including a hospital, a hotel, the governor's office. There is no tsunami warning in effect right now, but the search for survivors continues. Now you're looking at pictures of a New York City bus. This thing is dangling over a bridge. It was one of those double buses, so you can see the back half is still on top of the bridge. The front of the bus has crashed into the street below. Seven passengers suffered minor injuries. The driver also injured. His injuries were minor. The good news, no fatalities. Authorities trying to figure out if it was a mechanical failure or driver error that caused the accident. They had to close streets and call in a big tow truck to help out. All right, you're looking at a sinkhole, a pretty big sinkhole. The problem is the sinkhole sank again. It was filled once, then it returned. Back in October is when it happened the first time. A private company hired by the city came out and filled it up, but as you can see, it didn't work. The hole is 50 feet wide, 130 feet deep now. The nearby Varsity Club, that's a sports bar, is staying open for now, but the owner hoping they can get this thing filled in before it gets any closer, and so are the folks around them. It concern me personally, but if I was this restaurant, I'd be I'd be pretty nervous. Hopefully they'll get it taken care of soon. I feel bad for the people that live back in that area. Yeah, the county has hired another company to see if they can fill the hole for good. The pandemic may be bad for human tourists, but the animals are sure taking advantage of the situation. There they are. A couple of bears enjoying some time checking out the ancient ruins of Machu Picchu in Peru. These guys are the only surviving members of their species in South America. Look at nobody here. We got the run of the place. 
And finally, it is Million Dollar Friday, more like hundreds of millions of dollars Friday. Mega Millions tonight, the jackpot, $750 million. It's going to be more than that by the time they draw. Second largest in history. Remember the largest back in 2018? $1.5 billion? See, yeah. I thought we'd been close to this before, but I didn't remember that it was back in 2018. Yes. What would you do with all that money, Mr. Sears? There would be a lot of businesses around San Antonio that would be able to reopen. Aww. Yes. That'd be That's great. That's what I would do with it. That's I would true. make sure businesses are back on their feet. Share the wealth. People are employed or at least can survive for a while. I like that. The, the David Sears Charity so. Foundation. I know. I know. Well, my money's on you then. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> all right. We hope you win. What, what else are you going to do? I don't need all that money. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it would be hard to spend all that, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would. So might as right. well spread it out. All right, David. See you in a bit. Right now, it is 908, 48 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The latest on the college admission scandal, why fashion designer Massimo Giannulli is now asking to be released on house arrest. Spurs fell short during last night's game against the Houston Rockets. Later in this newscast, RJ and David are back for what this means for the silver and black. Not a great night. And a startup company has created a face mask with a wearable purifier. After the break, Alicia Beretta explains the inspiration behind it and why this was created. Mid-January, let's check on the markets. And right now, the Dow is in a foul mood, uh, down about 250 points, 30,743. Innovative technology at a San Antonio startup is providing peace of mind for those on the front lines of the pandemic in need of medical grade equipment. The company Just Air has developed a face mask with a wearable purifier that was created by Dr. Dan Burnett in California and produced here in San Antonio. How about that? Alicia Beretta has more on a local dental office, how, how they've opted for the special mask that's quickly gaining some traction. At first glance, it looks like any other face mask, but take a listen. That's the sound of a blower pack strapped around Dr. Dentist Philip Miner's waist that houses the air purifying respiratory system and allows Miner to breathe easily while completing procedures less than two feet away from a patient's mouth. I'm tilt you back here a bit. It just basically eliminates a lot of the issues as far as contaminants coming in the mask and contaminants going out of the mask. So it has an inflow and an outflow. Miner says it was easy to get used to and actually prefers the Just Air face mask over surgical ones for two simple reasons. And the main thing is it keeps me cool too and I don't fog up with my scope. So how does the technology work? The air that they exhale is being filtered through a panel in the front of the mask. Just Air is the only one that actually filters the exhaled air. To be exact, 99.7% of pathogens are filtered. That's according to tests performed by the filters manufacturers, a percentage that has allowed Dr. Miner's practice to remain open. This device has helped us feel more confident in delivering patient care being safe for our patients, being safe for our teams, and safe for our families, ultimately. Well, Just Air says that the mask is great for those in the medical industry, but also for frequent travelers. And you may remember back in November, we saw Mayor Ron Nirenberg on his flight to Washington, and he was actually wearing this Just Air mask. So again, for those in the medical industry, but also for those frequent travelers. Mark Steph. And Alicia, speaking of that, maybe some of our viewers are in the medical industry. How much would this mask cost? So the one that we saw Dr. Miner wear, that one runs uh, about $250. And then there's another one that's going to go through additional certification, and they're going to make some changes to the technology. That one's going to up it a little bit more to $500. And this is a big price tag, but according to clients like Dr. Miner, who we met, he says the peace of mind is definitely worth it. And we have an article on ksat.com now with all that information. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Justin joined us now. Justin, I didn't tell you the story yet, but I was taking my daily cat nap yesterday. All of a sudden, uh -huh. the whole house shook. It was one of those wind gusts. My house faced the north, and yeah. wow, it rattled the windows. Yeah, those winds came in big time yesterday afternoon. We saw some gusts here uh, up around 35 miles per hour. That was a peak wind gust in San Antonio, but there were some places that saw gusts up around 41 miles per hour. That was out towards Hondo. So it was it was windy yesterday. I don't caution you. It'll be Fairly windy today, just not as strong. I don't think we'll see gusts in that range. There is a wind advisory in effect that includes basically Lavaca County. So this is more or less north and east of us, but some of our eastern counties still could see some.
pretty hefty winds later today. Let's take a look at the forecast winds. This is around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Still looking at some wind gusts up around 25 miles per hour here in San Antonio. As you go south and west, the wind will be lighter. As you go north and east, the winds will be stronger. Gusts close to 30 miles per hour in LaGrange. Austin's going to see a breezy day too. Here's good news. Wind calms down tomorrow. We're going to see a beautiful day on your Saturday. In fact, winds will calm tonight and that will lend itself to some chilly temperatures tomorrow morning. Outside, perfectly clear skies, 43 degrees at the airport, 47 Stinson, 48 Kelly, 47 at Randolph. And you see the winds there generally out of the north, anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Dew points are extremely low. We've got dew points in the teens now. That's desert air, if not below that. So the air is it's going to be extremely dry through the weekend. That doesn't really change. It's not until we get into next week that we see the dew point shoot up. Dew point to 60 in January is significant. There's going to be a lot of moisture pouring in here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that's encouraging because I think it will lead to some pretty decent rain chances. So that'll be something to watch out for next week. In the meantime, though, dry air and clear skies. Here's the big picture. We've got snow wrapping around an area of low pressure up across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, snow in places like Chicago, uh, Detroit, Omaha, down to Wichita, Kansas. That's going to sit there for a couple of days and what we're watching is still out in the Pacific. So here's how the upper level winds sort of play out. That system finally moves east. There's another little system that works south towards Great Lakes and this is enough to pull a very weak front through on Sunday. Doesn't do much for us. Maybe increases cloud cover a little bit. That's it. We don't get any rain out of this one. But it's this next storm system that actually breaks off from the jet stream and pushes back down to the south and west and then just sits there for a couple of days. We sometimes see this in the spring, not all the time in the winter, but it's an interesting setup because it does bring in quite a bit of moisture and we're going to get some Pacific moisture too. all these things coming together for some rain. And in some cases, uh, there could be some pockets of heavy rain. So that'll be something to watch out for next week as this storm system gets a little bit closer today, though. Uh, temperatures up around 61 degrees and sunny northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. And then tonight with the lighter winds, you'll see those numbers fall off at a pretty rapid rate, eventually down into the 40s and probably near freezing tomorrow morning. 33 to start your Saturday, 65 for a high and sunny, 64 Sunday. We'll call it partly cloudy. That'll be the case on Monday for MLK Day as well. Temperatures actually fairly warm, near 70. And then the rain chances kick in 40% right now, Tuesday, Wednesday, 30% on Thursday. But as we get a little bit closer and we're able to sort of time out when and where these uh, areas of rain move in, we'll be able to maybe up those rain chances some and hopefully you get some rain at your house because I think we all we, we all need it. We, we do need it. You I and I have so. something planned Tuesday, but we may have to bump it. We might, mm -hmm. I mean, but we need the rain, so. Yep. <laughs> right now, 918, 49 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, Post Malone is giving back to frontline workers what the entertainer is gifting to nearly 70 hospitals nationwide. That's next. Well, it turns out Anne Hathaway hates her name. And one famous pop star is giving back to frontline workers. RJ Marcus joins us now for more in entertainment news. Hey, good morning, RJ. Hey, RJ. Good morning, guys. Yeah, who doesn't sometimes kind of dislike their name, right? I think, I think it we, happens to everybody. All yeah. questioned yeah. it at one point. Yeah, this Although is a little RJ's weird, though. Darn this, cool. Yeah, well, you know, it's, but again, my, that's not my full real right. name. So, yes, right. uh, I might share that with you guys a little bit later on. <laughs> Uh, when we get to that Anne Hathaway story, interesting. Okay, so we begin, uh, so we're looking at some entertainment news, and we begin with the latest involving the college admission scandal. So this feels like it was forever ago. Remember this happened, uh, but it was actually in 2019. So here we go. Massimo Giannilli, the fashion designer and the husband of actress Lori Laughlin, is asking to be released to house arrest. Giannilli serving his sentence for the scandal at a federal facility in Southern California. His attorneys say their client is spending most of his time in solitary confinement, partly because of COVID-19 guidelines. They say solitary has taken a toll on Giannulli's mental, physical, and emotional well-being. A judge has yet to rule on the emergency motion. And you guys might remember Rick Singer, the guy who kind of was the middleman for all this stuff. He actually has some San Antonio ties. He attended Trinity University. I don't know if a lot of people are aware of that. Yeah, so, 
Yeah, anyways, but that feels like it was forever ago, that college admissions thing. We're still kind of getting some uh, fallout from that. All right, so moving on, guys. The uh, Presidential Inauguration Committee announced that Lady Gaga will sing the national anthem at next week's event. There will also be a musical performance by Jennifer Lopez and other performers for TV because remember, we have all the COVID guidelines uh, in place, restrictions, including in those performers is John Bon Jovi, Demi Lovato, Justin Timberlake, and Ant Clemens, who is a Grammy-nominated R&B singer and songwriter. Tom Hanks will host the Primetime Inauguration Day special. It will air live on major networks Wednesday starting at 7.30 p.m. and will also be streamed online. Okay, so moving on to some other celebrity news. Here's this Anne Hathaway story. Turns out that we've been calling Anne Hathaway by the wrong name all of these years. Well, sort of. During an interview on The Tonight Show this week, the 38-year-old actress said she much prefers her nickname Annie. Okay. She said the only person who calls her Anne is her mother, and it's only when she's really mad at her. Hathaway joked that when someone calls her Anne, she thinks... Uh, that she's basically getting yelled at by her mom. She told Jimmy <laughs> Fallon to please call me anything but Anne. But isn't Anne Hathaway the one that could have told us to refer to her as Annie all along? <laughs> yeah. She could have done this a long time ago. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. She would have been a little less miserable, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey -o. laughs> I know I said it uh, wrong. Yeah. I uh, did it on purpose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, relax, Anne Hathaway. I think you're doing okay with your career. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to that Post Malone story. Uh, North Texas's own Post Malone is making sure some hardworking frontline workers will soon receive a free pair of his new Crocs. Did not even know Post Malone had Crocs, but these things were really uh, were really in demand. The rapper is giving away 10,000 pairs of the shoes to employees at 70 hospitals across the country. So the nonprofit music. Mus Musicians on call shared some photos of uh, some of the workers wearing the shoes the other day on social media. The new Crocs were released last month and they sold out in less than an hour. Oh my Musicians God. on call, <laughs> yes, <laughs> say the Crocs will be an early Valentine's gift, day gift for frontline workers. So, a couple of things there. Again, I didn't know Post Malone had Crocs, and I, I'm not a Crocs person, but I hear that they're really, really comfortable. They these, are. These newer ones especially. Yeah, because Luke Combs had some to come out yeah. uh, before the holidays, and Ad Academy was selling those. I got them for my son for Christmas. He's like, I hate how these look, but these are the comfiest <laughs> shoes I've ever had. <laughs> they're not. Some of them come lined now, right. you know, because right. it's cold. Yeah, and these are lined. That, those are lined. Yeah, yeah my wife has a pair like that that yeah. sort of have that thermal sort of uh, winter sort of and Crocs, yet, so it's pretty good. None of us have volunteered to go buy Crocs just yet, have well, we? Actually, I Not just yet. got some. Okay. But they're well, sparkly purple, so <laughs> that I'm, makes sure, sense. I'm yes. sure you guys won't be wearing sparkly that purple Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. No, I don't no. think so. All right, RJ, we're going to see you back here in a bit. Oh, yeah, Spurs. Yikes. Mm, All right. yeah. And you okay. can divulge your full legal name later if you'd <laughs> okay. like. Okay, commercial break. Yeah. Right now, it's 927, 49 degrees. Houston Rockets defeated our lovely Spurs in last night's game. RJ and David are going to be back in the studio to give a recap on the highlights and preview tomorrow's game. A firefighter makes a heroic rescue in a freezing lake up in Michigan. We have details still ahead. And K-12 in La Prensa, Texas are teaming up to cover the presidential inauguration. After the break, La Prensa's head journalist joins us to talk about what he's expecting at this year's inauguration. And checking the roads with Transguy 37 at Jones Avenue. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 9.30 on your Friday morning. Just now tuning into KSAT. Good morning to you. Justin's here with uh, what's looking like a pretty good weather weekend. Yeah, it is. I think it's going to shape up to be really nice coming up tomorrow, which is great news. We we deserve, I think, a weekend with some pretty good weather. Uh, temperatures will be in the mid-60s tomorrow. Right now, it's still a little bit cool. We're still watching some breezy conditions. Currently 49 here in San Antonio. 43 Bernie Sage, 44 Comfort, 47 Canyon Lake, 50 there in New Braunfels. And 47 in Hondo. Everybody's seeing clear skies at this point. We're going to see sunny skies all day long. Should point out, though, there is a wind advisory up across the northeastern counties where winds could gust as high as 30 miles per hour this afternoon. So here's what our forecast looks like. 57 noontime, 62 o'clock will be up around 61 for high. Northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. And it, uh, again, stays breezy today. But less wind tomorrow and uh, some pretty good weather. Sunday and Monday, and then rain chances coming up next week. We're going to talk about that seven-day forecast. Plus, we've got to look at the playoff NFL games tomorrow. How does the forecast look for those? We'll have that here in just a bit, guys.
Thank you, Justin. And taking a look out with TransGuide this morning, there's I-10 at Crossroads. Things running pretty smoothly right now. Now, okay, not so smooth, a rough night for the Spurs as they lose to an undermanned Houston team. Spurs fall to 6-6 six and six on the season. David Sears and RJ Marquez are back to break this one down. Good morning, guys. Uh, Woo. Yeah, <laughs> Where a, do we start here? There's a few, a few Spurs have a, have a new house, and it's Woo. all brick. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> so and, on that one. and you can spend the rest of the season asking them which meal they're at. Are they out to breakfast, lunch, <laughs> or dinner? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're out. That was uh, interesting. Yeah, um, well, you know, I never had a good feeling about this one from the start. Just the way they started. Mm -hmm. It looked a little lethargic to me. Out of gas? It, it looked like, yeah, they put in a lot in that... Uh, four and one road trip that they took that five game road trip they yeah took. and the thing is is that prior but, to the game they were saying all the right things you know we know that Houston's coming in here they were obviously disrespected uh, pretty publicly by James Harden Harden's traded they're down a couple of all-star players including this guy John Wall so you knew that they were going to come out ready to go and ready to kind of prove themselves and the Spurs just did not respond nice play there by yeah. DeMar but for the most part uh, lethargic slow and just a, a yeah. bad effort, a really bad loss everywhere. for the Spurs. Yeah, we don't need no stick of James Harden. That's what Rockets were saying. It's like, we'll watch, we'll win without him. And and they did. I mean, the Spurs didn't shoot the ball very well. We're, we're showing some highlights. Yeah, we're showing And that guy, that guy shot the ball very well. Yeah. Yellow John's a stud. 29 points. I mean, he was good. They, I mean, their fast break was not like they got blown out by the Rockets. I mean, they were in this all, all the way. They just, at the end, they just kind of, I don't know. Their defense wasn't very good. Yeah, and they were Rockets actually they were right in the lane on them. They were up eight you know, with uh, yeah. with five minutes left in the game, and you think that they're going to seal the deal here, but they fall behind, and then Demar misses the game tying shot. There, Spurs fall to uh, again I just a bad DeMar. loss. I don't I don't know what Pop was talking about. I will defend Demar. I mean, this guy's been off dealing with some health issues with his dad, and so he's you know his mind's probably in California. But I mean, he gave it a, a great effort last night. So and he we, had a good look there. Not fault yeah. that guy. There might be some other guys we can we can fault, but but not him. Yeah, frustrating loss. It drops them to uh, six and six on the season. And uh, Coach Popovich uh, definitely yeah. not happy after the game. Uh, let's see, if we have what uh, Coach Pop had to say. It's got nothing to do with defense, offense. It has to do with between the ears <laughs> and being ready to play. And we had four or five guys who were out to lunch. I didn't think you could go out to lunch. I didn't think you were supposed to be out. Aren't you supposed to be like staying indoors or something? Where, where'd they go? I, I, I wonder where they Pop's talking about a different kind of bubble. <laughs> oh, 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 did they, was it just like a quick trip to a drive-in? I guess so, because you know what? They, they didn't show up last night, so I get what he was saying. Now, I will say that I... Actually, I was glad that Pop sort of got on him. I, I think that they uh, sort of needed a wake-up call here. And, uh, again, Pop kind of summed up that loss. Uh, out to lunch. That's going to be the new phrase. When you're watching Pop, when he got done with that soundbite, I was waiting for him to just walk off like he did last year. You know how, how many times Pop will just come out, he'll spend 30 seconds ripping on his team, and then he'll just turn around and walk away? Leave, leave you guys hanging. Yeah, he didn't He did last night. He didn't walk away last night. He took a couple more questions, but I was. I thought that was that, that yeah. kind of speech. Like, you know, my guys were terrible, and I've, I've said enough, and see you later. <laughs> so well, it's, a, it's a little harder to walk away when you're doing uh, zoom. a zoom, zoom, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess, I guess he couldn't do that. <laughs> you're like, wait, did that just happen? Is he there? Yeah. Coach, but coach, if anybody could do it successfully, it would be I, Greg yeah. Popovich. Yeah, well, and that's why I say I don't know why he would just stand there and take questions. <laughs> it would almost be easier because, you know, you can't even see the guys. They're on, the, on some <laughs> computer, so you just walk off and say, see you later, I'm done. Um, but anyway. So, we'll as David mentioned, some good about that. Keldon Johnson, career Ooh. high, 29 points. He Stud. has been uh, great. Uh, Lonnie Walker looked a little banged up. He uh, kind of hurt his wrist a little bit, but he said he was okay yeah, there. Like he had it all wrapped up. Yeah, it was all wrapped up there. So, yeah. uh, Lonnie still played pretty well. Again, it was kind of the veterans that really kind of took the night off. If, if yeah, you know what? Patty Mills had an off night last night, but you can't hardly blame him because no. he saved him how many times already this year yeah, out of the 12 Patty's games that, that, that he came through. So. LaMarcus wasn't, wasn't on, and uh, Rudy Gay wasn't on last yeah. night. So. Yeah, definitely. But, I mean, it's not like, they, like I said, it's not like they got blown out. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. It was, it was that's close. True. It was just that one hurt. But that one hurt a little bit. It, it, it didn't was, hurt. It was, yeah, so, so they got the, the Rockets tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And we like if we hadn't seen enough of them, we get to see them two more times. Yeah. Well, then, they'll, well they'll, hopefully they take them serious. They'll yeah. get a win. They'll I mean, get a win in this yeah, one, guys. I, I think they'll I think they'll, they'll be in this time. So yeah. guaranteeing it. Huh, Skip Mark? lunch <laughs> and just show up at the game, yeah. and we'll be good. I think, I think we just gave them bad luck talking about them, saying, oh, you know. How great you, they were? Well, Lovely. well we were, making, yeah, we were we also them. making fun of James as well. And, you know, like, hey, where's he going to be? Yeah. You know, then he's not there. And then, well, yeah. You know, that's a Whenever you see a team lose their star player for, in this case, obviously traded. But a lot of times you'll see a team lose a star player or two, two of their big time players. And they respond at least a game or two because they got adrenaline. Hey, look at us. Hey, yeah. look at me. I can play I could fill that spot right and I think that's what they did last night it was like hey we're gonna prove that we can play without James yeah again just disrespected publicly by James yeah. Harden the so, night before he gets traded and it's probably a weight off their shoulders too just not having to like deal with that guy yeah. being in the locker room anymore but again that's the that's Houston's thing the Spurs got to take care of business tomorrow night. I think that was a one-off for the Spurs I, I and I too. think they'll take care of biz they'll skip lunch they'll tomorrow they'll show up they'll, play yeah. they'll, skip lunch. Lunch. they'll get they'll takeout eat. curbside whatever <laughs> they, they, they'll, they'll eat lunch early lunch. and get the yeah. job done there, there you go, go. Exactly. David RJ guys thank you very much have a good weekend thank you Thank well, God. right now it is 938 KSAT 12 in La Prenza, Texas, teaming up to cover the historic inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris next week. Joining us now is Roy Aguillon, La Prenza's head digital journalist, who actually covered it's, Barack it's, Obama's inauguration back in 2009 as a McCollum High School student. Hey, good morning, Roy. Good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning. Good. We understand the last time you covered an inauguration was in 2009 when you were in high school here in SA. Yeah. Looking back as a student, how was your experience then? Oh, my gosh. It was so crazy. You know, you don't know nothing. You don't know if you're supposed to be acting right or how or any of those things. So we just went wild. We had a good time. I was reading some of the blogs that we did uh, from that time from 2009. And it's just hilarious to walk down memory lane like that. <laughs> and Roy, you know, this inauguration, uh, we understand now, is happening during a pandemic and with some security officials expecting protests or even riots. Tell us what do you expect will be different when witnessing it this time around as a journalist? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, one of the things just as like a regular person, it will be interesting to see how do you do an inauguration when you're not supposed to have an inauguration? And then also, I mean, during the Obama campaign, when I'm reading those old blogs, I remember it felt like a sardine can. Everybody was, you know, shoulder to shoulder. You, it took like an hour to move a mile if you were just trying to uh, drive or walk or anything like that. And this time I'm imagining that the, it might look a little bit more like a ghost town. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like. Uh, and I would like to see, too, what does these security precautions look like? And uh, just see what does D.C. look like during this particular inauguration? Yeah, I was at uh, I, I covered the Trump inauguration for KSAT four years ago, Roy, and the security, of course, was unprecedented. We, it's safe to say this year's is going to be the highest security inauguration we've seen in U.S. history. Let's talk a little bit more about what are you looking forward to covering this year's inauguration? Well, you know what? I mean, I think the big boys, uh, the the national stations will be taking care of the news of the day. So my hope is to go in there and find the stories that maybe they couldn't get. So uh, talking to people about like what is going to happen with these stimulus checks, our Congress people from here in San Antonio, uh, we're working with a ghost hunting organization and uh, they are going to help us figure out some of the like haunted spots out there in D.C. and food. I want to try out some of the food out there in D.C. <laughs> And Roy, uh, I understand. So you went to high school in San Antonio. I imagine you have family in San Antonio. Uh, and that, who knew that, you know, you went back when you were in high school and now you're going now with everything going on. Uh, are you ha having any or hearing any concerns from your family members? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> My mom calls me three times a day and begs me not to go. <laughs> I know. it's it, But, uh, you know, I, I think... Um, we're going to be just fine. There's uh, quite a bit of security out there. There's a lot of uh, National Guard members deployed out there. And uh, as I understand it, the feds have uh, 20,000 more National Guard troops on standby just in case things get shaky. But uh, we do have contingency plans. One of our first interviews will be with the former assistant director of the Secret Service. So he'll really get us educated on how to make sure uh, if things go a little bit haywire, uh, we know what to do next. All right. Roy Aguillon with La Prensa. You be safe out there, okay? Thank you, Roy. Thank you, guys. Yes, be safe, and uh, we look forward to your content on KSAT and KSAT.com. Have a good weekend. 941 right now, 50 degrees. You're watching TMSA at 9. A Girl Scout who is always closing and a firefighter braving icy water for man's best friend. Next in today's Take a Look at This.
Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now I have another deal for you that your dentist will thank you for a portable water flosser. This item is perfect for the entire family and it works for implants, braces, crowns, and bridges too. It's a cordless water flosser teeth cleaner by Dr. Bay. Sounds like a mouthful, but this award-winning flosser really supports great oral health. We'll actually give it a little try here. Ooh, that is a lot of pressure there, so you know it's getting the job done. Now it has a 360 degree rotating nozzle, cleans every corner of your mouth and in between your teeth, three adjustable water pressures. Choose the best mode for your teeth. It also comes with a flosser, nozzle, and USB cable and travel bag. Helps also to fight gum disease and you'll have that great smile. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $46.95. That's a 21% discount. Now you can find this deal and many more at caseatdeals.com. Um. 946, welcome back. A young Girl Scout's incredibly savvy front porch pitch goes viral. And a firefighter braves the cold to save a dog. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. An Arizona first grader is on her way to sweets selling stardom after her unique front porch sales pitch. Would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? Went viral. What two or three or four or five? Six-year-old Allie Schroyer already seems to know the most important rule of sales. Always be closing. Always be closing. A neighbor's doorbell camera captured Allie's perfected sales pitch, which included clever tactics that transcended her customers' taste buds and went straight for their visual tastes. What's your favorite color? Because the boxes are... Um, are those colors? The neighbor shared the adorable video with Allie's mom. Allie's mom shared the adorable video on social media and voila. She sold over 200 boxes in the first 24 hours. Amid the pandemic, Girl Scouts will undoubtedly face some unique selling challenges this season. But for this smart cookie, sales savviness is baked right in. Thank you. Imagine being willing to wade into an ice-cold Michigan River in January. That's exactly what a brave firefighter did to save a stranded dog that reportedly got loose and fell through some ice. The department said the firefighter had to break a path through the ice to get to the ailing husky. As soon as he reached it, the animal went limp from exhaustion. Comments on the video on Facebook praised the heroic efforts to save the dog, named Loki. Firefighters later shared an image of Loki getting warmed up and commented, it's not always humans we're called to save, sometimes it's man's best friend. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Wow, Loki's a lucky, lucky dog. Back to that Girl Scout. Oh so my goodness. She has <laughs> fine-tuned her charisma on Zoom. She sings, he's a ring doorbell, and she turns on that charm. That is awesome. And then she said, was it 200 boxes on the, on the first day? I mean, I would, I would buy cookies for her. I would too, I would too. <laughs> She's such a cutie. Yep. Yeah. Justin's here now. We're looking at the weekend forecast. And, and one of the things I, I love about what our weather team does is you guys tailor some of these forecasts to really cool events. Well, it, it's, uh, it's uh, there's some big playoff games this weekend. Yep. I know I'm excited to watch uh, some of these football games. Obviously, we got our first game there in Green Bay. And uh, now I can't remember. Oh, yeah, the, the Rams are playing at Green Bay. It's going to be a Lambeau field, 6,000 fans, 35 degrees there in the morning. You know, the, the fun part about Green Bay is you think there will always be snow. And uh, there really is going to be a little bit in the morning, but not much during the game time. So right. 335, uh, looks like cloudy skies, 35 degrees. That's pretty typical. Green Bay football weather. Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. And then uh, in Buffalo, it's Ravens versus the Bills, 715. There will be some lake effect snow going on there. So it looks like both of these games a little bit wintry. What you would expect for a playoff game in Green Bay and Buffalo. It's been a little while since Buffalo's hosted a playoff game. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, let's go outside for you right now. 43 degrees, sunny skies, north northwesterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. And winds are going to be somewhat gusty today. Not as strong as yesterday, but some gusts maybe up to around 20, 25 here in San Antonio. And then as you get out into this advisory area where you see this brown color, that is where we have a wind advisory until 6 o'clock. does include Lavaca County. That's where wind gusts could be up around 40 miles per hour. So much stronger as you go north and east. Here's how it plays out with the computer model. And as I mentioned, now this is around 4 o'clock, wind gusts close to 25 here in San Antonio. Much lighter winds down to the south and west, much stronger as you go northeast. And then tonight, the winds really calm down, and we'll see lighter winds going into our Saturday. As far as the dew point goes, 
Uh, you can imagine with a uh, northerly wind, our dew point's pretty low, and that'll be the case through the weekend. By Monday, though, the number starts to climb, and then by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we've got a lot of moisture in place, and that's going to be squeezed out of the atmosphere, I think, as we get an upper level low moving in, and then we'll get some decent rain chances. Uh, the setup right now, we mentioned some of that snow around Green Bay and Buffalo. It's because of this upper level low, which is spinning over Missouri right now, not moving too much, and it's keeping us in a very stable pattern. But as we look down the line, there's a, a nice area of low pressure out in the Pacific, and this is the one that's going to basically cut off from the jet stream and eventually drop down into the desert southwest, and that sets up well for us. Uh, you can see the snow right now underneath that uh, low upper at Omaha, Wichita. That's where the, the active weather is. Uh, as we go forward in time, uh, we've got one little system that uh, works to our north on Sunday. That brings a few clouds with it, but no rain. It's this next system that drops down into Arizona Monday into Tuesday, throws some disturbances towards Texas. We get some of that lift. We got the moisture in place. It's looking good. Looking good for some rain chances, and we're excited about that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I think that's our window. There will be enough moisture there where we could see some pockets of heavy rain. 61 degrees this afternoon. Northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. We'll go 65 tomorrow and sunny. 64 Sunday, partly cloudy. 69 on Monday for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And then look for 40% chance of showers Tuesday, Wednesday, and a 30% chance on Thursday. We'll be right 51 degrees right now. We'll be up around 61 this afternoon. Breezy, beautiful week in mid 60s, both Saturday and Sunday. Rain chances next week. Uh, almost everything's virtual right yes. now. That's become the norm, the new norm. Yeah, you know, concerts and everything. Now, touring Graceland is now virtual as well. Yeah, they're offering online tours for fans around the world, including those who can't travel to Tennessee during the pandemic. Uh, so Grayson said the two hour guided tour will take a virtual visitor uh, into Presley's former Memphis home, which has been turned into a museum and through the meditation garden where he is buried. And this will be $100 for a ticket. Wow. OK, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> so sorry, took my breath away. Yeah, I know. Um, it kind I mean, of I know it's the king and all, but uh, <laughs> also included in the $100 ticket is a tour of Presley's jet and a walk through the entertainment complex, which houses exhibits and artifacts related to Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. So Graceland typically hosts hundreds of thousands of visitors a year, but the tourist attraction has seen a drop in visitors during the virus outbreak, like many places. Sure. Graceland was closed for several weeks last year and is now open for limited capacity in-person tours. So when are these virtual tours? Yep, so it looks like it's scheduled for January 27th, February 25th, and March 25th with more dates expected. My parents actually, mm. Well, you know, pre-pandemic, but we're able to visit. I've never been. I've never been. Uh, Mike Ostrage used to work in TV in Memphis, and he said oh. it. it's impressive from back in the day, but now, by today's standards, you know, with all these mega mansions, it's oh. actually fairly small in stature. So uh, only a, a true fan will appreciate it, maybe. I guess I so. Will. I guess so. But anyway, more on that's that? on KSAT.com. Can you just do that on Zillow? Just <laughs> you could.